everyone! If you're the kind of person who likes to sit outside with a tall glass of something cool when the weather is hot, then we have the perfect little decoration for your patio pleasure. <laughs> we are going to make these really cute little strawberry coasters today. You can make one, you can make an entire set, they also make a nice gift. They're very simple to do and they're about five inches across, so they'll fit a mug, they'll fit a cup, or even a wine glass if you're so inclined, a little bit of rosé on the patio. <laughs> These are really cute. They're best made out of cotton because cotton is heat, re heat resistant and it washes well, uh, but if you're only going to use them for decoration or possibly a very large applique, you could use acrylic yarn as well. I say that because we often hear that in the comments section. So let's grab our hooks, grab our yarn, we'll head on over to the craft table and we will stitch up a couple of strawberry coasters together. In order to make our strawberry coasters, we're using size 4, medium weight, 100% cotton yarn. You want around 14 yards of red, 3 yards of green, and about 1 yard of yellow or white just to add a few seeds to the surface of your coaster. You want a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, and a 4.5 millimeter hook, also known as a 7 in the US and also the UK if you've got old hooks. And once you've got all that together, we can get started. We're going to start with our red and we're going to make a cinch circle. After you've chained one to secure your circle, you're going to chain two more and this chain three will count as a double crochet. Two double crochet into the circle. Remember that you were working over top of that little short tail and that's going to allow us to cinch the circle shut chain one, three more double crochet into the circle, chain one, and you're going to do that again, three more double crochet into the circle. Chain one more and then we're going to cinch up our circle nice and tight and we're going to join with a slip stitch to the top of the chain three. So we've got nine double crochets and three chain one spaces and it's going to feel a little circular still but one of the ways you can combat that is by finding the little spaces, the chain one spaces in between your double crochets and just kind of pulling out on them a little bit and that will give you just the gentlest of triangle shapes. We're not going to turn our work at the end of every row, we're just going to keep going in the same direction. So to start row two we're going to chain three. The chain three at the beginning of every row counts as a double crochet and that double crochet is sitting directly on top of that stitch. So you see the one, two, three from the previous row well, that's sitting right on top of it. We're going to double crochet into each of the next two stitches and I'm working over top of my little short tail. And there's a double crochet in each of those stitches from the previous row. Into every chain one corner space we're going to work two double crochet. chain one and two more double crochet all into the same space. So every chain one corner space gets two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet. And that's going to turn our corner, there's our little corner there. And now you're just going to double crochet into the top of each of those three stitches, two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet into the corner, double crochet into the top of those three stitches, two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet into the corner and that'll bring us right back to the beginning and I will catch up with you there. Chain one, 
Once you've worked a double crochet into the top of all of those nine stitches from the previous row and treated every chain one corner with two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet, that brings us back to the beginning. You should be right up against that chain three that began the whole row. Slip stitch to join at the top and you can pull up on your loop and just find those little chain one spaces and pull them out and you'll see that nice rounded triangle shape happening. If you've got some bowing in the middle, like it wants to sort of like turn into a bowl shape on you, don't worry. When you pull out on those corners, it will help to sort of flatten it. And of course, tight stitching is fine because eventually you'll be using these, you'll have something sitting on them and they will flatten out with you. So airing on the side of tight versus loose is better for a coaster project. You should have 21 double crochet stitches and three chain one spaces at the end of row two. And we can start row three. We're still going in the same direction. We're going to chain three to begin row three. This counts as a double crochet and this is sitting directly on top of that chain three from the previous row. We're going to double crochet now into each of the next four stitches because this row does sort of start part way across the row, but that's no big deal. We will fill in the blank when we get back around the other side. So double crochet into each of those four stitches that separates your chain three that began the row and the first corner space. And here it is here. Into every chain one corner space you work two double crochet, chain one and two double crochet. Now when you're leaving corners, and you may have noticed this on the previous row, it might help to pull back a little bit so that you don't miss that first, the top of that first stitch. It'll be covered by some of those double crochets. So pull back a little bit on those corner stitches so that you can see the top of the stitch. However many stitches you have between chain, chain one spaces is how many double crochets you need to work across the middle or the side before you get to the next chain one space. So make sure you don't miss that first stitch. Double crochet into it and double crochet into the top of each of those stitches all the way across. There'll be seven running along each side. And then when you get to the corner, two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet. And I'll catch up with you back at the beginning. When you've worked two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet into the last corner space, you have two more stitches left before you get back to your chain three that began the row. So pull back on those stitches. You don't want to miss the top of that first one coming out of the corner. That's one. And then double crochet into the top of the last stitch. And because we are joining and working in the round, you have a false stitch that sits at the bottom of the chain three. So if you're working to the right like I am, or right-handed, it'll sit to the right. If you're working left-handed, it'll sit to the left. And you want to skip it for the purpose of this project. Sometimes we use the false stitch, sometimes we don't. We are not using it for this project. So each side should have 11 double crochets, so that's 33 double crochets in total, and you should still have three chain one corner spaces. And you can sort of pull out on those spaces there we go. And again, if it's bowing in the middle, don't worry, it will flatten with use. And that is row three. We've got one more row of red to work. Row four is just like row three. We're going to start with a chain three and it counts as a double crochet and it sits directly on top of that chain three. That's your next stitch. There's six more double crochets to double crochet into the top of before you get to the chain one space. And then Everything is the same. Two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet in the chain one corner spaces. You'll do that three times in total. Each side had 11 stitches along it from the previous row, so make sure in between chain one spaces you're getting all of those 11 stitches. And that's all there is for row four. I will catch up with you back at the beginning. Once you work two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet into your last corner, that will leave you with four stitches to double crochet into before you get back to the chain three that began. So remember, the stitches in between your corners will equal 11 because of what was in the previous row. 
Do not use the false stitch, that's this guy right here. Join with a slip stitch to the top of the chain three. And you'll have 15 double crochet now across each side or 45 double crochet in total. And you'll still have those little chain one spaces. So you can pull all three of those corners out. There's our lovely little triangle or our strawberry shape. That's it for the red yarn. You can now fasten off and take a moment to weave that tail in across the back and then grab your green. We're going to put a little foliage across the top. We're going to grab our green yarn now and start with a slip knot on our hook. We're going to create some leaves running across the top of our little strawberry. We're going to join with a slip stitch in the chain two space. There we go. I'm going to work across my little short tail here. We're going to chain three. Chain three counts as a double crochet. And we're going to work two more double crochet into the same space. So right in the same place that we joined our yarn. We're going to skip two stitches. One, two. So if it's easier to look at them down here, one, two. Find the third one and slip stitch into it. And chain three, so right where you are, one, two, three, and two double crochet all into the same place that you slip stitched. So chain three, two double crochet, this is making a little leaf. Then we skip two stitches, one, two, find the next one and slip stitch, that anchors the leaf. You've got these little cute little points happening here. And create the leaf. Chain three, two double crochet into the same place that you slip stitched. And this is the little pattern you're going to repeat all the way across the top. So chain three, two double crochet, skip two stitches. Sometimes it's easier to find these guys, like count them along the bottom. One, two, find the next one and slip stitch that anchors the previous leaf. And then right in the same place, chain three, two double crochet, and so on. When you get across to the other side, you're going to skip the last three stitches and just slip stitch into the corner space. So we start in a corner space, we end in a so corner space, we're just sort of sneaking in that last little uh, slip stitch. So you should have five little leaves running across the top of your strawberry. And now we're going to chain one, turn, and we're going to single crochet a little more onto our leaves. So we're going to single crochet into the first two stitches. into the top of the chain three. So just grab the little loop. You don't even need the whole thing. Just grab the little loop there. You're going to work single crochet, chain one, single crochet. This is just going to give it a little bit of a peek. And then you've got the rest of that chain three. So you can see those two chains there all the way around it. So just stick your hook right through the space. Work two more single crochets. We're going to slip stitch into the slip stitch that sits between your leaves. And then you start all over. Single crochet into each of those next two stitches. That brings you up to the top of the chain three. Remember, we're looking at the back side of it. So just grab that loop, slip your hook under that. Single crochet, chain one, single crochet, Work two single crochet around the rest of that chain three. And then into that slip stitch between the, the leaves there, you're going to slip stitch. And that's all you're going to do all the way across. You're single crocheting twice into the peak, 
single crochet, chain one single crochet, and then two more single crochet down the other side. And that's just making a slightly larger leaf. When you get all the way back to the beginning, you're just going to work your last single crochet around that chain three and slip stitch down into that original chain two space, or I should say chain one space, to join. So slip stitch into the corner space, fasten off, and you can take a moment to weave in that tail too. Next, we're going to take that yard of yellow or white yarn, and we're just going to thread it up in our yarn needle. We're going to do some sort of randomized embroidery to add a few little seed stitches on the front or the surface of our coaster. Now, it's going to look like this on the back. You can do a better job of weaving in your little tails <laughs> than I did here. <laughs> I'll show you how that looks in a minute. But all we're going to do is just randomly place a few little seeds or little short stitches across the top of our coaster. And this is optional. If you don't want to go ahead and add any little seed stitches, you don't have to. But if you're going to, take your hook or your yarn, I should say, and you're going to bring it in from somewhere down at the bottom of your strawberry from behind. So we're working on the front facing part of our stitches. Leave a little bit of yarn out the bottom because we're going to try and bring all of our work all the way back down to the same point. And this is all you're going to do. You're going to take your needle and you're just going to skip over a stitch or two in any direction you want. You want to be kind of randomized. And then you're going to plunk your needle back down and you're going to try and wiggle your needle through the stitches, through the yarn, not out the back, not out the front, just kind of through the middle. Bring it out somewhere else. And you can afford to be a little tight with this, and I'm just gonna, the first stitch might look a little funny, but there's the first one. Don't sort of stress out too much about the individual stitch sizes or the directions they're going in. Just try to be as random as possible. And the whole time you're just weaving your tail, or your yarn, I should say, with your yarn needle through some of those stitches. And you're gonna have a little bit showing to the back, which is perfectly fine, it looks kinda cute. But all you wanna do is just try to keep your hook, or your needle, I should say, running through the stitches, not behind them. This is sort of how we hide the running thread. And then you can just do this all over your strawberry. You can work as many stitches as you want, or as few. Mr. and Stitches thought maybe I may have added too many uh, little seeds to this. He kind of likes more of a cartoony look with fewer, so I might try to add just a few less stitches this time, just to make one for him. That way we know, <laughs> we know which coaster is mine and which one's his. Um, and I am curious to see what that looks like, so that's what I'm gonna go for here. So a few less seed stitches than I did on my previous strawberry. Um, but you can do as many as you want. You can make them as long or as short as you want. All you're doing is weaving your yarn and your needle through the stitches um, and then bringing it out and making a little short stitch in some random direction or another. And you're going to do this sort of all the way up and down around your entire strawberry and try to get your last stitch to be somewhere down at the bottom of your strawberry so that we can bring our two ends together back here and knot them together.
When you're ready to put in your last stitch, and I did my best to kind of randomly work my way all the way around the strawberry, and um, I don't know, I think, I think I pretty, I have maybe like five fewer <laughs> seats than the previous one. Well, I tried. <laughs> Just work your last stitch and bring your needle down pretty much right next to where you started with your little tail and then just knot the two ends together. Try not to, to pull too tensely on the yarn because you don't want to sort of tighten them up too much on the front, but you can tie that second knot fairly tight and then just trim whatever you've got left. And you're going to weave in these tails underneath some of the stitches here on the back of our strawberry. So I'm gonna weave my little needle through those stitches and then I'm going to put both of my tails in to the loop at the same time. These are wool needles. I know we'll get a lot of people ask about them. These are called wool needles. They usually are sold in sets of three. And come on. There we go. So now I've managed to hide the knot so the back of my strawberry doesn't look very messy at all. A couple of seeds, that's okay. And the front has the seeds on it. And there we go, two little strawberries. You can sort of pull your little strawberry into the shape that you like, maybe tug up on those little pointy leaves. And I've got two strawberry coasters now ready for the patio. I'm in my own little strawberry patch. <laughs> I love strawberries. Nothing says sweet summer like a strawberry to me. They're pretty, they're bright red, they're just so cheery, and they taste delicious too. So obviously decorating with them is the right kind of feel to get us into the warmer months ahead. Anyway, we hope you enjoyed making this sweet little strawberry coaster along with us today. And we will see you soon here on the Jada and Stitches show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have a great week. Bye everyone. Hi everyone. This is Mama and Stitches. Thank you for watching. Here are a few other videos you might enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe and you can also click the like button and the bell. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.